So this motherboard is going to be able to have overclocked memory up to 4000 overclocked in it, 4000 megahertz. Uh, two M.2s, so we've got the bigger version there, which is generation 3, and then a smaller version there. you got your audio boost there by Niamic Sound, and you've got LED strip line that goes down the bottom. And all the actual connectors are really nice and easy to get to, like your um, RGB connector there, an RGB connector at the top. Eight pin EPS connector with a phase connector. We've got 10 phases right here. And it looks like we've got the same layout of the socket as well. Uh, Z370, can remember what it was. Got armor plated for the RAM and then two PCI Express slots, which is armor plated. And then you've got three PCI slots as well. And one normal standard slot. You can have three way crossfire and two way SLI as well. And all on the back as well, you can see that it's got loads of uh, um, solder points as well. So it's 16 bus speeds there, four times bus speed eight times bus speed eight times bus speed and four times bus speed and then we've got nice Japanese capacitors everywhere as well and they look really nicely soldered to the board we've got fan headers everywhere I've got like I think we've got two on the side here and we've got one here so three four on the side here and five right there and they look decent because they're all PD PWM not DC so that's pretty cool uh, you've got the chipset and it's slightly on the wonk it looks pretty cool mm -hmm. then you've got USB 3 point USB 3 sorry on the side there and USB 3 on here and this looks reinforced and doesn't like gonna break or anything like that. Normal standard 24 pin and then you've got a Corsair link at the top there. But if you've got Corsair products you can connect it up and you also got the thermal uh, pad underneath as well the M.2 and uh, you've got a nice little chip and it just looks really nice and then you've got all the nice connectors that are really underneath and it's just easy to get to if you've got like the holes drilled out of your um, case and also at the top for the EPS connector and it's better than having four or no not four like a four uh, EPS connector or a six pin EPS connector and an eight pin as well. You just it's got one with a phase right next to it for better uh, overclocking and stuff and uh, the bracket looks really nice with the carbon look as well yeah it's a really really nice looking motherboard I do actually like the look of it but you won't work with Skylake and it won't work with KB Lake it's totally different so what are you gonna do so on the back you got the old PS2 uh, connector for your keyboard and mouse two USB 2's on the back there display port we've got USB uh, A and C and this is um, up to 10 gigabits per second we've got USB we've got four USB 3.1s on the back there as well and then there's normal type A's and then you've got HDMI port and then you've got a gigabit infinite port and we've got a spiff out and then we've got 7.1 surround sound. Right so anyway Z170, Z270 and this is the Z370. Obviously this is the flagship motherboard and you can't go any higher than the 8700K on this uh, motherboard but yeah Core i3 is coming to it where it's going to be uh, more cores, more threads and it's going to be really good. You're going to have a certain thread count, not thread count, a certain certain higher frequency in a single core and then you've got all the cores and then it's got a different frequency so instead of saying like one single core can be at 5 gigahertz and then single did I say that? single core at 5 gigahertz and then four single cores at 5 gigahertz it's not going to work like that it's going to be like a difference between megahertz and stuff and voltage and everything and I was talking about stabilization and I think that's what they're going with but this motherboard looks just looking at the heat sinks they look really nice and it's got de decent phases on there so we've got like oh we've got two Three, four, six, eight, ten phases on there. Good Japanese capacitors. They look proper soldered down. I'm trying to break one off, but I can't. But yeah, it's got nice Japanese capacitors. I can see. Looks like it's going to hold some some good voltage. The audio boost looks the same as every other motherboard. So the RGB. I mean. Um, the audio boost on this side, the Japanese capacitors looks exactly the same. It's got a nice LED strip going down on the side there. Still RGB and everything like that. I like the fact that they've put one EPS connector, 8-pin up there with a phase to make sure we got good voltage control right there. And also the uh, RGB connector is right next to the EPS connector on this side. So you can hide this cable and plug it in from the back of the motherboard. And plus you've got one at the bottom. I like that. You've got your audio connector and your uh, header. You've got a fan header actually. You've got one fan header at the bottom and then you've got your reset button there jumper led yeah you've got a jumper led right there as well so yeah they put it more in decent places usb 2s if you still use that it's at the bottom then you've got your uh got four sata connectors there and two sata connectors there they've kept it all nice and close they've got so before when i used to like connect a usb 3 connector to the side these used to like be quite fragile but this is solid as a rock so you put one on the side so you can actually blend it in into one of the grommet holes or one of the holes that are going to be into the motherboard then 
then you've got one USB uh, free here as well, so you can have one coming out or one in. And then you've got your Optane uh, memory as well, so you can have super fast boosted mechanical hard drive to access random data information, so that's pretty cool. And obviously the chipset's just a little bit to the wonk, so it looks slightly different. Normally it's nice and straight. This looks like the same sort of socket, so I'm guessing you're gonna still have the same Intel socket that can uh, lose the CPA cooler and all that sort of stuff. You've got a fan header here if you wanna use it, and obviously the Corsair Link, that's pretty good. And it's nice to work with other third party companies. And um, obviously if you're gonna use Corsair Power Supply and Corsair Air Cooler, no, not Air Cooler, it's uh, AI Water Cooler, then this is really decent to have as well. It just works really well. You got one plate for the M.2 as well for the large M.2 32 gigabits per second generation 3 And then you've got one at the bottom here for the smaller versions But I don't know why it hasn't got a plate. I guess they cut the cost like that And yeah, like to be honest with you, it's really quite awesome You've got armor plated RAM. Don't know why you need that. You ain't gonna have RAM that's really heavy And then you've got armor plated for the PCI Express graphics cards. You can have three crossway um, AMD graphics cards or you can have two-way SLR NVIDIA style three uh, uh, PCI um, Express, not PCI Express, PCI slots, and that you can put a game card in there. Not oh, game card, not a game card. You can put in a audio um, DAC card in there or a gigabit NIC card and stuff like that. And that's another thing I want to talk about real quick. You've got up to gigabit port here, but I really like to see like faster internet. Wi-Fi is basically nearly faster than like a, a connection now with a single connection. So why can't we just get like something that's going to be really fast offer uh, offer us like a 10 bit 10 gigabit uh, nick card so we can actually place it in it have fast internet and it's more stabilization for gaming and obviously video editing when you're if you want to video edit off this motherboard because obviously it's just a motherboard just have the right graphics card and cpu and then you can just offload uh, to adobe cloud and then make sure the internet's fast enough to do like 4k footage and 2k footage and stuff like that it's really awesome it's just another player market that you could actually use it for but anyway as i said memory goes up to 4000 and overclocked and hopefully this motherboard is going to be stabilized more than what the other generations are and it's nice to see that we've got six cores that means the developers can actually push forward and make things more powerful that means VR could be more realistic and more stable and more known to people Ooh. so you want to know about the information about this motherboard well it's not going to be available to October the 5th but there is a um a performance qualification thing that I've got here by MSI which has tested the 8700K already in this motherboard and uh, they've also tested the 1080 Ti so I can give you kind of the results that you should be expecting that's pretty good because I don't think anyone else has done that but hopefully I won't get sanctioned for even saying this but anyway uh, so this motherboard has a 3D Mark Fire Strike extreme score of 13,597, 13, graphics score 14,513, physics score 19,457. Unigen super, Superposition, the one I really like using, where it's in uh, like an office and it looks all good and all the graphics and everything goes oh, and it's all in the science room, like explosion, all that sort of stuff. Well, frame rates per second, that got 1809 and that's 1080p extreme, so that's pretty, pretty good if you can compare it to all the other Superposition things I've done. Score 43.46. Cinebench R15, CPU CB 1413. Um, a uh, X two six four F E H D benchmark one zero one uh, that got frame rates per second of forty five point eight five A D R sixty four five point nine so the read speeds were three thirty eight thousand two hundred ten write speeds were four hundred fifteen um, thirty four and latencies in uh, N S was fifty eight point three. Uh, Crystal Mark 5.21 USB 3.1 Generation 2 so, square, uh, Sequential speeds were 1000 and sequential write speeds were 981 um, So that was tested on a hard disk drive was a Samsung 850 Pro is on Windows 10 64 chipset was a Intel official last version benchmark not benchmark uh, update whatever should be able to find it online um, VGA driver versions, NVIDIA official last version, so check that out, and um, this was, when was this tested, the 9th, so September the 12th, yeah, September the 12th this was tested, this motherboard, and it was on a memory frequency of DDR4, 2666 megahertz, 
This can also be over, used overclock memory of 4,000 uh, megahertz. CPU core was 3.7 gigahertz. Base clock was 100 megahertz, and it was using Direct X12. And it was obviously using an Intel Core i7-8700K. And um, obviously that's an engineering sample and it's using memory gelid DDR4266 MHz which I went through it. And then obviously the graphics card 1080 Ti Pro. Now that's pretty good. I say that's pretty good. Um, after looking at the results from what I've seen here, I can compare it to AMD and stuff. And I could say that... I want to do single core performance. I'm going to take two cores away from the six core uh, 80. What is it called? I can't remember now. 8700K. I'm going to make it as a quad core processor, test it against the 6700K and the 7700K, and then obviously put them all together in a lovely benchmarking bar thing, easy to read, and then see what the details are. But I can't go any more than that because I haven't got the CPU here, and um, I'll test it when it comes to it, and uh, probably test it with different motherboards. But anyway, that's Coffee Lake. That is Coffee Lake for you, and I'm... I'm come on, man. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Just check the results, what I've just said. All right, take it to, um, like, the websites, and then you can see, like, a comparison.